بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Popliteal axis how important is it from vascular surgery point of view I would like to present this topic which I think is very important for vascular surgery I'm going to discuss how important is it indication of popliteal axis how to do it steps of CTO recanalization and different scenarios of passing SFA occlusions from below up and one case presentation I think uh, popliteal axis is extremely important because it can convert a failed procedure from the upper end into a successful one and also I think uh, it is easier to pass SFA occlusion from below rather than from above you will use popliteal axis in less than 5% of your cases especially in failed anti-grade and this is the number one indication is failure of SFA recanalization from above or difficult contralateral access from whatever reasons flush occlusion to superficial femoral artery another challenging problem and tandem lesion to SFA occlusion especially with both iliac lesions how to do it uh, you will have three types of uh, maneuver depend on your skills if you have more surgical skills you can do a small arteriotomy put a needle in and then you can do your popliteal axis but this is the least preferred one you will need your percutaneous skills and you will need your duplex skills as well which I think is the safest so let us go to percutaneous and for percutaneous uh, look for calcification in the artery and try to direct the needle knowing that sometimes the artery moves away from the needle do road map from the upper end and try to go with the needle on this road map or you can push the wire into sub intimal plane from above and then try to hit uh, nearby with the needle hoping to go for the lumen always use micro puncture needle and don't use anything more than 6 French and continuous separate infusion is extremely important now my preferred approach is duplex guided popliteal axis here you will have the picture of the plain duplex scan and then you will have the same membranosus muscle which will tell you that you are low down you need to go a little bit above and then you will direct the needle away from the vein you try to go directly from the skin to the artery to avoid arteriovenous fistula the steps of CTO recanalization basically are three steps penetration of proximal occlusion then negotiation through the lens of occlusion and then re-entry back home to summarize in my experience popliteal axis going to SFA occlusion from below you will have one of five scenarios scenario A which is blunt occlusion scenario B which an occlusion with a um, crack in the middle tell you to go intraluminal or occlusion with um, a small tunnel there near the wall lumen and then you have uh, occlusion with a side branch and you have a complicated uh, multiple tracks with difficult anam anatomy type E which is the most difficult if we're going to discuss type A which is a flunt, uh, blunt occlusion no angiographic clue to where you go usually it is easier in the uh, if you pass it from the upper end and you try to go with point 035 try multiple maneuvers and try even small uh, the hard tip of the wire to do a little bit of penetration for about two millimeter in order to uh, crack the initial cap of the occlusion try to redirect the wire tip and try to insist on being intraluminal and avoid sub unless there is no other choice one of the tricks for type A is to inflate a small balloon which is 3 to 4 millimeter in diameter as a centering balloon uh, which will give you a backup support and then with point 35 wire you try to hit the middle of the occlusion to avoid going sub and try to go intraluminal again if you have calcification with type A try to change the type uh, the tip of your wire and try sometimes a hard end of the wire for one or two millimeter injection of uh, normal saline as you go along 
will help you in cracking this problem with type B which is more favorable morphology you have tapered uh, central break try to go through this break and again try to um, ride your recanalization smoothly to be intraluminal again with movement of wire supported with either catheter or a balloon and try to negotiate your occlusion as you go along until you find safely re-entry uh, reorient the catheter tip uh, toward the point of reconstitution and drag the caster across the distal segment to reach the distal end type C which will always be eccentric and will always uh, push you towards subintimal again try to put a glide cast or vertebral or MPA directed away from the branch not towards the branch but away from the branch in order to uh, go intraluminal as you can see here consider point 014 wire if it fail and you can think of either PT2 or V18 uh, control and type D where you always have a side branch that's a wire always goes through this way then try to have a vertebral looking the other way around and try to with the bare end of the wire a little bit to make an entry into the fibrous cap and then follow through th through the rest of the occlusion again it is a challenging morphology e which i think is the most difficult there is a lot of bridging collaterals there is no real anatomy and penetration is is very bad difficult experience and this is the worst type um, if the wire fails you need to support it with a catheter or a balloon especially hydrophilic catheters are very useful and re-advances the wire and you can gain little by little few millimeter in advance as you are doing more cases you will get more difficulty and usually success will drop with more difficult cases as you do so the uh, less time you perform for easy lesion the more time you need for difficult lesion and obviously front runner and uh, re-entry devices like outback casters are extremely useful here is a case presentation from a crossover you can see injection of dye profunda total sfa occlusion and recanalization at lower third of sfa which is very common scenario and then we try it from the upper end to pass it you can see the wire have passed a little bit of recanalization but we failed to do re-entry at the lower end in that case we shifted to popliteal axis and here is a wire and balloon coming from the popliteal axis and we're able to balloon the upper end of superficial femoral artery and then we'll have a picture from the crossover catheter and you can see that now we have a flow into superficial femoral artery with stenosis at the orifice of the SFA now another balloon dilatation to balloon the re-entry point to secure it in order to have a good flow to the popliteal artery and after that usually you prefer to put a stent into the upper end here is the flow in superficial artery you can see the area where you have this section and re-entry and the flow goes back again to popliteal artery and here is a stent in the lower end which is uh, precise control 7 mm by 80 self expandable nitinol stent to secure the lower end and they have been released and then you can put another stent into the upper end again uh, nitinol self expandable stent precise control 7 mm by 80 mm in the upper end and you can see it gradually being deployed and then you do the angiogram and you can see that uh, you have a flow into the upper part of superficial femoral artery again you check the lower end at the popliteal artery and you can see you have a good flow popliteal artery distally as well so in my experience a good experience comes from bad judgment and good judgment comes from bad experience and thank you very much for your time and i hope it is useful to all vascular surgeons Thank you.